Hi there. So, my name is Kieran. If you've never seen me before, I'm the person who actually runs this channel. Um, and what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be talking about a uh, project that I've been running for the last seven months or so. Uh, basically doing at minimum at least one GitHub contribution a day for the last seven or so months. So, let's start off with what a GitHub contribution is. So if you've never used GitHub before, it's basically a platform for hosting these things called Git repositories. Really quick, a Git repository is basically a fancy folder, which is where you start with an initial set of files that you upload, uh, and then when you make any changes to those files, Git will track the changes from version to version, uh, which is why it's called a version control system, or VCS, if you've ever heard that term before. Uh, and because it keeps track of these changes, there are a ton of useful features that it has, like the fact that you can go back in the Git history if you break something, uh, or you can do what's called branching, which allows you to maintain a primary version of a piece of software while somebody works on a new feature and then merge them all together. Uh, it gets a bit more complicated than that, but basically the long and short of it is that as a way to keep track of your code, and GitHub is what you can use to host these Git repositories, or sometimes called repos, on. GitHub also helps you to keep track of your performance as a developer. And so one of the primary ways of doing this is through GitHub contributions. Um, it's a little graph that pops up on your GitHub profile. I'll show it right here. <clears throat> and basically what it is, is it is a, a visual indicator of the days that you have done either a code commit, which basically means that you have put code up on the site, um, sent a pull request. So you've tried to get somebody else to take your code and put it into their project. Uh, or you have submitted an issue request, which is basically like a bug or a feature request to somebody's project or your own project. And so basically, with all those things together, the idea was to do, at minimum, one of those actions every day for seven months. Um, so I have some notes that I'm just going to quickly reference back to. I saw, so sorry, I'm going to be up and down as I'm reading these notes at the same time. But basically, so I started this in September 1st, 2019. Uh, I originally planned on doing it for one month, uh, so till October 2019. Uh, instead, I then decided to push it to December. And then I decided to push it to March, which is when I finally ended it was in March. Um, since then, I've still been keeping up with it mostly. I've only missed two or three days, I think, since then. It's now April uh, 20th now. Um, so basically I've been going through and doing at least at minimum one contribution a day all that time. <clears throat> so uh, to give you an idea of where I started before and where I am now, uh, the frequency that I was doing this before, the frequency that I was doing these contributions beforehand was about 30 a month, uh, which you'd think works out to about one a day, but it really doesn't. What it actually was was more about one in every three days I was doing a coding day, which would be somewhere between two to nine contributions, which kind of evened out the difference. And then the frequency after doing this was closer to about 70 to 120 a month, uh, with again, at minimum doing daily contributions, but also every one in three days being kind of these coding sprint days where I'd be doing somewhere between five and 20 contributions. Um, so ballpark between October 2019 and April 2020, I've done about seven to 800 commits. This gets a little bit fuzzy because I went through and deleted a whole bunch of repositories um, because I was approaching 100 and it was getting untenable to just maintain them all. And as you'll see in the video where I go through and review um, my old code and my new code, you'll see exactly why I deleted my old projects. Um, it's kind of a shame because I wish I could have done some videos on them, but I wasn't thinking about it. I was just more thinking, I need to clean some stuff up, so I got rid of them. But uh, anyways, um, just to give you some background on where I'm at in my coding career. So I've been programming since 2018. Uh, I started in fall 2018, which would have been September 2018 uh, with Python 3. And I started that at a university course uh, doing CS fundamentals, so doing basic object-oriented programming, collections, data types, all that sort of stuff. Um, I then moved on to the second course, which was a Java fundamentals course, which focused more on syntax and more nitty gritty language specifics and that sort of stuff. Um, and it was also a group course, which helped me learn a lot about project planning. On top of that, I've had one additional course in computer science so far, which was a course in uh, X86, uh, sorry, in ARM V8 assembly, which if anybody knows anything about low level programming, it's basically uh, the same sort of assembly language that's used on the Raspberry Pis. Um, and then also I do work as a web services specialist at my university, which is basically client-facing uh, conflict resolution, essentially. 
Now, in just a moment, I'm going to cut to me going through some of my old projects so that you guys can see the difference between my old and new projects and see how much of a difference this has made. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know there will be another uh, set of videos. There's actually going to be five additional videos on top of this. It's going to go through each a specific aspect of what I've learned because, again, I've been doing this for seven months. There's a lot that I learned, so I want to give each their due sort of thing. Um, so those uh, five different topics will be about how to pick projects, how to plan projects, how to document projects, how to get involved in a programming community, and how to reflect properly after doing your work to learn from it. Um, so those all will be separate videos. I'll try and link them down below just so that you guys can take a look at them and uh, you can pick the topic that you feel your weakest in and go from there. Um, but for now, I'm going to cut to me talking about some of my projects. So I will let it uh, let, let myself take it from here. Okay, so we're just going to take a quick look at some of my old projects to see where I came from and where I'm at right now. So the first one we're going to take a look at is a project called Python Web Utilities. So the first thing that you'll no notice is that uh, there is almost no documentation in this main section here. Uh, if we contrast that with what ended up actually replacing this project, you can see uh, the documentation that's available here. If you just came to this project and you had to pick between one of these two projects to do, you'll notice the documentation that's available here is much easier to read. There's also documentation for people who want to help with your project, so if they actually want to learn how to use it, it's actually all here, as opposed to this project where you can see who knows what I'm supposed to do, who knows which file I'm supposed to run, who knows where I'm supposed to start off with, you know? Um, another thing that's uh, pretty interesting as well is the amount of commits. So you'll notice here there's been 64 commits as opposed to eight. Um, this actually implements more functionality than this project. So really taking the time to not over commit constantly and do all of those sorts of things, which is kind of annoying when you're going trying to go back through the history. I was kind of anal about just like constantly committing stuff all the time back when I first wrote this, uh, back in January, this is the last time I updated it, but um, I actually finished working on this. When did I actually stop working on this? Back December 29th, 2018. So uh, that was when I stopped actually working on this. But you'll see also there's no real planning. So there's there's a bunch of issues that I wrote here um, that are just different features that needed to be implemented. But then for some reason, I put them all into their own project planning board, which made no real sense because literally like actually if I just quickly open up one of these boards it's literally just the one issue in this board and that's it so I don't know why I did that um, also this doesn't follow any Python standards this is specific to Python in this case but this doesn't follow any Python standards for how you're supposed to package things um, there's a random file here that tells you how to make an executable using a project that no longer exists um, there's a huge number of dependencies for the amount of functionality that's actually been implemented. There's roughly one dependency for every two files in this project, which is a little bit ridiculous and can be a huge security risk down the road. So overall, just not great. This basically, this new project, um, you'll see there's documentation here when you first come to the page immediately so people can see it. Um, there is a project planning board that has information for the next two versions uh, already planned out with what needs to be done for them. Um, and there's met way less commits. There's only been eight commits so far. Um, and also there's even a documentation website that goes into even more details about how to use things and what all of the different function arguments are, uh, and it all actually follows Python standards by using setup.py and things that actually exist. Um, so yeah, and then also just the code itself, I went back and took a look at that code. That code, this code, the biggest problem that you run into is just organization and also commenting. So organization-wise, there's a file called file.io, but it doesn't actually do any file.io. Uh, there's also like a file, like I think is it YouTube Utilities? No, which one was I looking at? No, empty files that just say to do. Uh, one of these ones, redirects, yeah, that, that was it. There's a ton of code and there's just a bunch of code commented out to say, to, just says to do, see if the functionality is still viable, which I don't know what that means. Um, to do, make web or file parsing options, which I don't even know what that means either. Like all this stuff is just kind of written down hastily and coming back to it now, I have no idea what any of it means. So basically I started from scratch, rewrote it myself. <clears throat> and so you may be looking at this and thinking, 
wow, this must have taken ages to write all this information down and whatever. Uh, actually, one thing that I did do that is uh, more of a pure technical tip is that I wrote this thing called a package template. And so this is specifically for Python, but basically what it is is it has everything pre-filled out for you. And there's just a little to-do list at the top for you to be able to integrate this into your own project. And all you do on GitHub is just hit use this template and then literally type in your name and you can just set up a repository using the exact same template that I've already provided for you. So if you want a way to kickstart a project, um, this SWS project took me like two or three hours to write because all of this stuff was already done for me. I literally just had to copy and paste, like changing the names in different areas and then like writing a description for it. And that was about it. So this is super useful. I'll also have this linked below in the video description. Uh, next, we have a multi-language project. Uh, these can actually be quite complicated because if you're trying to do multiple languages, uh, there's a lot of things about having to make sure that both your runtime environments are set up and all of that sort of stuff. And basically the way that I sorted that here was I just didn't bother. <laughs> I just kind of let everybody try and figure it out themselves. So there's two different scripts here. There's Quick Launch Python CMD and Quick Launch Python SH, which if you've ever used Bash and CMD scripts, you you'll know that you can just launch these through a terminal. Uh, if not, then good luck running this project. Basically all that it does is it CDs into the Python directory, sees into the source directory, and then runs Python text version uh, .py. So that's just this random file here, right here. Uh, this was basically supposed to be like a cookie clicker style game where you like clicked to gain devotion and then with that devotion you could like take on gods and then fight them and that sort of stuff so that was the idea behind this game uh it didn't really go anywhere it also had a really complicated hierarchy and because i just finished my course in university i was obsessed with using abstract methods because i just finished my java course and so i was like oh i gotta use all these these java things that i've learned about which wasn't the best idea because they're not implemented great in python uh, it's almost like they're two different languages with two different ways of doing things. Um, and then also you notice here, there's a documentation section with no information on how to build the documentation, no information on how this documentation was written, no information on how to update that documentation. All of this stuff, basically, you just kind of have to, it either works or it doesn't. Like, which version of Java was I using? Which version of Python was I using? Who knows? Um, for the Java version, there's zero documentation at all. There's just a thing that says text version, which I can assume based on the Python version is where it's supposed to run from, but who knows? Um, now compare this with a project that does have multiple languages, uh, which is a project that I just finished writing recently, which uh, I uploaded a video about as well, which is talking through an explanation of the one-time pad, which is a cryptography scheme. Uh, and you'll notice that inside every language folder, there's a readme file that has information about how to set up your environment and how to run the file. So in here, in here as well, all of the information is available and ready to go. So if you've never used a language before, you're just kind of interested in trying out the language and seeing what it's like, and you want some basic demo code, people can do that. They can come in here, they can read it, and they can get an idea for how something works. All of this is using all the standards that are defined in the language, and it's, it's easy to understand how everything works, along with a full explanation down below on what's happening here. Um, and the last one that I just wanted to, t to point out to you is a project that I believe I mentioned at the, earlier on in the video called AHD. This was one of the larger projects that I worked on. And basically this project, you can see, I followed the exact same, I used that exact same file, that's a coding template file. Um, I basically came through and wrote this. I wrote this live on stream. I wrote this in, I think it was six hours or something like that, eight hours maybe. And you can, it, even though I haven't contributed to this since February, so that was like, uh, what, two-ish months ago, two, three months ago, something like that. Um, you can see if I come in here into the project planning board, I know exactly what I need to do. I know exactly what the next version, oh, okay, these are the fun the features that I wanted to do, and I have notes about these features, like what I want to do for these different features. Um, and I can just hop back into my project super easily. So um, looking at these projects, if you went back and you looked at my old projects, uh, so you looked at that, uh, let me just quickly go back to like this, this project here, where it just has this, and this project here, where it just has this, and then you compare those to projects like this that have all of this stuff written down below, 
and uh, projects like this that have all the same information. They have like websites attached to them and all that sort of stuff. Which one would you want to use, basically? Um, I'll let you decide which one you would like to use and that sort of stuff. And if you think that this stuff is interesting and you want to know more about what I learned more specifically, then be sure to check out the rest of the videos in the series. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully I will catch you in the next one.